Hi everybody and welcome back to chapter 15. In this chapter, um, we get into some key uh, definitions and other concepts necessary for good managerial accounting. We're going to look at cost behavior, how activities impact that cost behavior, and then finally, how we estimate costs based on that. Uh, first, let's take a look at patterns of how costs respond to what we call activity cost drivers. Here, our basic pattern is this. We have variable costs. So, here I have this bottle of water. You can see it. <laughs> if I'm, The raw materials that go into one bottle of water, if I make two bottles of water, it's twice as much. So those costs are going to vary directly with the number of water bottles that I make. I need so much plastic, I need so much water, I need so many labels, so many shipping containers, etc. Now we also have, um, they, they're going to change in proportion with activity. So uh, if we don't have any activity, we don't have any costs when we have variable costs. But as you can see, we're assuming variable costs here to be linear. And as we increase our activity, which is here, we, our variable costs are going to go up proportionally. Pretty easy to understand, right? Okay, so higher variable costs per unit create a steeper line slope. And here's our basic equation for that. All right. So how does that behave? Variable costs change in direct proportion to the change in activity. Pretty easy. Now fixed costs are costs that do not change in response to a change in activity volume. If we had insurance on the plant, um, if we make one or zero or a million units, the cost per month is the same. So that's a fixed cost. It does not change in response to a change in activity volume. And there is, if, if there's no change, as activity increases or decreases. And there's no response then to short run changes in activity cost drivers. You'll see later in the chapter we call that the relevant range. Um, here, you can see that fixed costs don't respond to activity, and they're flat. Straight linear line. The slope is zero, represented by a flat line. <laughs> a very impressive uh, a very impressive little a very uh, detailed formula here, y equals a. All right, so basic cost behavior patterns then, uh, we can take a look at that, that, and it's pretty easy to understand, but we also have mixed costs. These are a little more complicated. They contain both a fixed and variable cost estimate sometimes called semi-variable costs. But the example I usually use is one of a phone line in the plant. It cost me, I believe it was about 15 or $20 a month to have that phone line there, whether you use it or not. But as you use it and you make long distance calls or you do some things, those are the variable costs, where the $15 is the fixed cost per month. So, Mixed costs increase in a linear fashion when activity increases, uh, and they're positive, though, when the activity is zero, because there's a portion there that's fixed. And that's, that's a nice graphic depiction of that. Fixed portion, and then the variable portion builds off of that fixed cost. In my example, the $15 monthly fee would be the... Uh, 
uh, fixed cost of that telephone line, more of a variable portion, would be the amount that that phone is used for making long distance and calls. Okay, they contain both fixed and variable cost elements, as I think. And so, again, our formula is y equals a plus bx. Okay, then. Uh, variable costs, fixed costs, and mixed costs. We have a thing called step costs as well, and those are constant within a narrow range of activity, but they sh shift to a higher level when that activity exceeds the range. Let's say we're having a good, we're having good acceptance of our products, and we decide to put on a second shift. Our whole second shift is going to be additional costs, right? But um, that would be a step cost. But within that narrow range of first shift activity, um, that's, that's going to be constant. Okay, step costs. They increase in a step-like fashion as the activity increases, and those total costs shift to a higher level when that activity exceeds a range. And there's the step cost. First shift, second shift, third shift, maybe something else in there. So we have another formula there. Okay, shift in cost structure. Uh, managers have to understand how cost behavior works and there are cost structures to operate efficiently and effectively. Total cost function in recent years has shifted more to fixed costs and less in variable costs. Because as we automate, we're putting in more fixed costs. And it's important then for our organizations to manage those fixed costs. Uh, Visio. Uh, Visio. Uh, a unit of output is the primary driver. And then a time period is too short to incorporate changes in strategic cost drivers, such as the scale of operations. All right. So here we're going to look at determining a linear total cost estimating equation. And this is the beginning of cost, volume, profit. So the total cost behavior, there it is. Now, as you see here, we're talking fixed costs. And as we add our variable costs, we build on top of those fixed costs. And so this total here represents our total costs. Everybody see that? While this represents just the variable cost, and this, the fixed cost. I don't know how many times I've, dr I've drawn this graph for my management. Very important uh, for them to understand how costs work. Now, we're going to incorporate here um, a relevant range. And I talked about that earlier in the slides. It's a portion of the range of activity associated with the fixed cost of that current or expected capacity. Um, and here, we're assuming that those variable and fixed costs are linear within that relevant range. And a normal range of activity that they expect to operate, like a first shift. But then when it jumps to second shift, you're getting outside that relevant range. But within that normal first shift activity, fixed costs are going to remain generally linear. And although to and then total costs remain similar as well. So uh, here we're talking about Kellogg's. If there's a surge in demand that exceeds capacity, Kellogg's might confront a decision 
to expand into temporary production facilities, such as capacity outside the relevant range. In today's um, example, I think 3M is probably a good example of that, the makers of the best N95 masks that are used in operating rooms and the like. When the pandemic came down, um, there was a huge demand for those those N95 masks. And so uh, 3M went to general quarters, basically, to turn up their production to accommodate that dramatic increase in demand. And that, of course, is outside our relevant range. Marginal cost. I sometimes call that incremental costs. The incremental or marginal costs are those that are involved in making one more unit of product. Marginal cost. Okay, let's look at marginal cost and activity levels. Here, you see that our fixed costs um, really are a curvilinear cost pattern. And they show you this so that you can see that within this relevant range here, our normal operating line, that fixed costs are, um, and total costs are generally linear. The excess capacity resulting from higher marginal costs is shown there in the beginning, and then the optimal circumstances here with the marginal cost relatively low, and then the capacity constraints with high marginal cost. Exactly the situation that Kellogg's and 3M, are, 3M currently is confronting. Okay, relevant range then. The accountant's linear approximation of total cost function then looks like that. They take the curve linear out of the equation, as you see. And our fixed costs and our, our variable costs then are shown as, as uh, linear, especially within the relevant range. And my experience has been that within that relevant range, it's pretty linear. So the economist's total cost function is referred to as curvilinear, which we saw in the last slide. And it looks like that. So, our unit variable costs are going to be the same, regardless of how much we make. It costs so much for this bottle of water, so much resin, so much processing time per bottle. So our costs per bottle are going to be the same under, under variable costing. All variable costs stay the same level at the, the same at all activity levels. Whereas our average cost um, is useful if they want to know the cost of serving the customer. So here, uh, we our average cost per customer falls dramatically um, as our volume increases. Okay, the average costs decrease as the number of units produced increases in a fixed cost scenario. Okay, the types of fixed costs. Here we talk about committed fixed costs or capacity costs are necessary to maintain the current service or production capacity. And that looks like a good place for us to stop this particular video. And when we return, we'll take a look at discretionary fixed costs. Until then, bye for now.